It is an emotional roller coaster being a New York Met fan for sure. In every aspect of that word, yeah? In how they've won. But m more to the point, really, the heartbreaking end of 06. Ever since then, I think Met fans have been extremely nervous. The Mets and Terry Collins have become completely accepting of this garbage. I mean, going into the year, yeah, there was a lot of hope, but many, many, many question marks. Hope and doubt. Sort of a slow, steady, tedious march back into depression. That was painful. Brutal. You know, I was disappointed. It's like we're prisoners in right. jail. Into the unbelievably dramatic events of the trade deadline. What just happened? This is the horrible trade. We're crying with them. That's how we feel in the stands. But the blink of an eye, that could change. It's out of here! It all starts to slowly come together. Gave me motivation. And then real joy. Oh my God. You understand the emotion. That was raw. It's tough to put into words. I don't know, I don't know, who, I don't. What, what's going on? Put up the box! This team is magical. That's how it had to be. But I'm conflicted. Forget about joy or sadness, but it's just. Oh. Stress, just tension. He needed to win that freaking game. His games get like insane and it almost didn't feel real. I couldn't handle it. Are you kidding me? Ah! No one likes a slow death. Let it, let it at least be quick. We blew it. It should not be infiltrating my life and emotions the way it is. We got delivered back into our natural state. It's still unbelievable. There's hope for this team going forward, which is ultimately how I now feel. It was a Hollywood script. That's my Met set list right there. <laughs> Let me bring the stage one of the funniest men in America, the one, the only, Mr. An Chief. hour, right? Right hour? Most Met years, we're the Wiley Coyote. And we really think we're catching the Roadrunner. It's the false hope. And then when it's exposed, we're gonna make it to the playoff. No, you're not. No, you're not. It's the Wiley Coyote mentality. However, we're not a coyote anymore. Yeah, it was a good run. It felt good. Because no one expected it. Who expected that? I wanted to see this team have a winning year. I didn't know if they necessarily, you know, were going to be good enough to, to, you know, get by the Nationals. But I think that was it. You know, win 85 games, win 86 games, and at least show me that next year maybe, you know, maybe it could happen. I mean, this is a team that is not going to be able to catch Nationals, but I do think they're going to be in the wild card contention. You know, this team, in a nutshell, is we think we're good enough. And I remember a meeting that we had in spring training where guys with playoff experience, you know, spoke. I think we've got we've got a lot of talented players. It's fun playing behind this, this pitching staff. The point that I really wanted to try and get across was don't be surprised when we win. What is going to be so important for the Mets in the first couple of uh, months is uh, not to let the division run away from them. One more strike to get. He struck him out, and the ball game is over. Let me tell you something, people. The Mets are for real. It was my wife who said, you're a nut with the Mets. You're nuts. Get him out! You should make a video at the end of every game the way you are, where they win or lose. Tonight, the Mets won how many in a row? Swing and a miss, ball game! And as for the win streak, this one goes to 11. And you better hope they don't win 15 in a row, because then we might start getting cocky. Let's go, Mets! So we get off to a pretty good start. 
you know, and then, you know, obviously I get hurt. So the Mets now lose David Wright on this slide into second base. He's walking funny. Did you notice that? Yes. Something a little on his right leg. And I don't think I quite knew the significance of it until my hamstring was supposed to be healthy. Um, you know, so I start a running program. And all of a sudden, you know, I can't walk because of my back. You know, so I knew that something was wrong. I mean, remember, they didn't have David Wright most of the year. Darno was out for a long time this year. Just look at what that lineup looked like. You never felt any confidence this offense would get going. And you also felt hopeless that management wasn't going to do a damn thing about it. One and two, the count. Harvey kicks and deals. Swung on and missed strike three. So this game's about pitching. We knew that we were going to have good pitching. We had, knew we were going to have a healthy Matt Harvey. And a brilliant return by Matt Harvey. Harvey back and back for real. You know, certainly Jacob DeGrom had burst on the scene as a rookie of the year. Jacob DeGrom strikes out the side in the first inning. And we really felt that it wasn't going to be long when you got Noah Syndergaard up here. Syndergaard's first career batter strikes out. Syndergaard, a fan six in his first big league start. It's a little hard to comprehend the amount of things that have happened to me the past couple of months. That was a good start for Noah. Struck him out. Fastball at 98 away. Syndergaard can really bring it. Another great arm. I see the future. I see the, okay, Syndergaard. Oh, all right. I get what he's capable of. DeGrom, Harvey, Matt. The first game that I threw, I didn't really have a chance to catch my breath. Everything was kind of like a whirlwind. When Matt's pitched, I get so emotional, I cried. Big night for the local product rookie, Steven Matz. This kid's a local guy. He's a high pick by the Mets from here. You know, it's what the major leagues are about. It's about childhood dreams being reached. He struck him out. You know, biggest crowd I ever pitched in front of, especially if I had so many friends and family at the game. He hits this one to center field. Hamilton going back. It's over his head. You just can't put it in words. There's tears, there's smiles, there's happiness. Mats has driven in four of the Mets' five runs, and the Mets lead five to two. Your grandfather, he made me cry. Your whole family was there supporting you because they're from Long Island. You know, all the work, all the, the moms taking you to practice, the dads playing catch with you in the backyard, all those things come to fruition when you finally get there. This is a fairy tale. Oh, what a game. Steven Matz comes up rookie pitcher and he's great. And uh, okay, this is good. Maybe he'll help us uh, get back into this, but we're not hitting. Mets left 25 runners for Trans. I mean, unbelievable futility. Mm. Swing and a miss. He got him. We went through a bad stretch where we, we weren't scoring. We were not hitting. It was un almost unwatchable. I mean, this is a team that strikes out a lot. And a called strike three taken by Wilmer Flores. Their offense was a question coming into the season. This is not a huge shock that they're struggling offensively. That's with only three hits tonight after just four hits last night. Three hits. Three hits? The Mets? Our pitchers hit better than the guys on the field. What happened to the Mets that last week of July when they write a book about the Mets, you know, franchise, this week is going to be a defining one. I mean, this could have been a completely lost season for the Mets, and it wasn't, and pretty much every reason why was in that week. Let me tell you something about that game. In that ballpark, before the game started, there was a perfect game buzz. There was literally talk about Kershaw could pitch a perfect game. Kershaw. And then the guy went out there and actually flirted with one. Clayton Kershaw was masterful tonight, took that perfect game into the seventh inning. 11 strikeouts. I knew they had to make a trade. And I, every Met fan knew, all right, well, who are we going to get? The Mets 
ownership had done so little for us over the last few years that we were basically begging for anything. It, it's all, so that week is so crazy that you almost can't keep track of it. I don't know if I remember it all correctly chronologically. I remember it all, but... Now, they do bring up Michael Conforto, their top hitting prospect up out of double-A. He came in like a veteran. It's been amazing to watch Michael Conforto go out there and just play baseball. Michael Conforto with four hits in just his second big league game. I just hope there isn't that thought that this kid is now going to save this team. You bring up a guy who looks like he's a can't-miss guy now in Conforto. You go out and make the trade for two professional hitters, you know, with Johnson and Uribe. The Mets are sending young arms to the Braves for Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe. Sandy went out and got Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe. They came in here, and the attitude I saw in the clubhouse completely switched. Kelly Johnson homers in his first game as a Met. The Mets put up their biggest offensive night of the year. You know, what we did was try to improve the team over a period of, you know, seven, eight, ten days by addressing one need after another. A rebate with a walk-off hit, and the Mets win it three to two in ten. And by that time, I think we felt we were sort of all in. The game's going on, and the news breaks. It is being reported on Twitter that the Mets have a deal in place for Carlos Gomez. And at the time, I think every Mets fan is very excited because Carlos Gomez seems like the answer to their prayers. He's going to be their leadoff hitter. He's going to play center field. Two of the names being bandied about, Zach Wheeler, Wilmer Flores. But then all of a sudden, Flores is still in the game. The fans are on Twitter and Instagram and all that, so they find out the trade was happening. Is anybody in the first or second row actually like yelling at him? Hey, Wilmer, good luck in Milwaukee. Who knew what was going on that night? What's going on? All we're hearing is this trade has happened. Gomez is saying goodbye on the plane. We, we find out that Terry Collins apparently didn't even notice what's happening. I had no knowledge that Wilmer Flores was going to be traded. David Wright was here in New York. He was rehabbing. He came up to me and he said, there's reports on TV that Wilmer Flores has been traded. In our clubhouse, you know, we have the TVs on watching the game. Can't help but to you know, spread like wildfire on our bench. And he said, is that true? And I turned and there's a, we have a phone that goes to the front office and I said, when that phone rings and tells me he's been traded, I'll believe it. Until then, it's all speculation. He goes in the end deck circle and some fan wishes him goodbye. You know, yelling, him, have fun in Milwaukee. You know, we got Gomez. So now he gets pretty emotional. to one place and you don't want to leave and when you find out that you have to leave this place you, you know you get a little bit emotional this wasn't a baseball story anymore this was a real human interest story and everyone felt how we felt at some point in their lives which is the Mets no longer wanted him that he wasn't good enough and everyone could relate to that I mean, yeah, you're talking about a young player that was signed by this team when he was 16 years old. This is all he knows. You know, some of his best friends in life are on this team, in this organization, and all of a sudden, you know, a blink of an eye, that could change. You know, you understand the emotion. Only the Mets could do this to their own player, lose out, and then that wasn't even, that's when you think the trade was going through. Then as soon as the game's over, Nope, deal's off. All I can tell you is there's no deal. And we were just like, are you kidding me? That was painful. Brutal. When they came in, they told me there was no trade. Somebody came to me and said, Wilmer's crying. So why? Well, he got traded. To who? <laughs> From what? I didn't know. Once the Gomez thing fell apart, I know I said, that's it. They're not doing anything now. You start with the Gomez trade, which didn't go through followed the next day by a really disheartening loss to the San Diego Padres. They lost that just heartbreaking game to the Padres where there were two rain delays and Justin Upton hit a three-run homer off of Familia. That was maybe the low point of the season. The Mets blow a six-run lead at home for the first time in 45 years. 
and you have no idea if management's going to do anything. You know, you no longer believe whatever you heard Sandy or the Wilpons say about it. That was one of those linchpin moments, like, well, we zigged when we should have zagged, and now it's straight off the cliff. I keep hearing Cespa's name get brought up. I go, wow, that'd be a cool one. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen, but that would definitely be a good one to have happen. I was, I was, I was pulling over in a rest stop, and they went, it's two minutes before, oh, oh, someone just made a move. But the biggest deal of the day came down just before the 4 p.m. deadline, as the Mets finally got their outfielder. Tiger's slugger, Ioannis Cespedes, is who the Mets ended up with. And then it rolls across the bottom. It's official. Cespedes coming to the Mets. I was like, Cespedes, really? That's, I mean, after it first hit me, like, that's better than Gomez. They said Cespedes went, what? What? Who wait a minute, who'd they get rid of? Did we just lose all our pitchers? Because this is a great player, and I'm sure they definitely wanted a lot in return. The Mets sent the Tigers two minor league pitching prospects, Michael Fulmer and Luis Sessa. What? It's a great move. They needed a player like this. This is a great move. You think Mets fans will finally be happy? Oh my God. Oh my God. And the guy next to me is like, is that good? I'm like, oh, this is great. Another packed crowd. Packed with energy, with excitement, with possibilities. It has been a busy, hectic, chaotic, up and down last week to 10 days for the Mets. Now, as for tonight's game, they've got to win. One run, five hits both ways. And here we go, starting the bottom of the 12th inning, opening up this very important three-game series. Tough game back and forth against the team we're chasing. And then we get an opportunity late in the ball game. Flores drives it. Deep left center field. Near the wall. It's out of here! Flores ends it with a home run! He did it! Flores! Full game! Two to one! That's how it had to be. It wouldn't have been the same, you know, without Wilmer hitting that walk-off. I mean, it was just Hollywood script. Helmet flying off his head, jumps on home plate. He's being mobbed. He did it. The Mets take the opener. We're all waiting for him at home plate. Him coming across, grabbing the shirt, letting everyone know, hey, I'm a Met. You know, I believe that everything happens for a reason. That was the reason. From tears to cheers, the space of about 48 hours. This team is that much. You love this team? Well, then we love you. Wilmer Flores! Wilmer Flores! Wilmer! Wilmer winning the game. Wilmer, we love you. Mwah! Two games from first place. We're coming at you, Nats. swept the three-game series from the Washington National. Everybody head to Washington, D.C., because it's the cleanest place in the country, because they just got swept. All of a sudden, not only do they make the big trade for Ioannis Cespedes, he becomes a legend for two months. Three homers, seven runs batted in for Ioannis Cespedes. It was insane what he did. I can't remember any Met carrying a team on his back single-handedly like that. He is just annihilating the baseball right now. I was so ecstatic. That was the, the euphoria. Oh, behind the back, flip, and he got him! Oh, wow. Wow. Got it, missed strike three. The rally parakeet lives. When David Wright, the captain, comes back in his very first bat. Pass ball hit deep to left field. Hits the ball in the upper deck. himself back into the lineup with thunder. I think the moment of the regular season, it's that game in Washington, Labor Day. Cespedes drives one to right center. They come back to beat the Nationals. He scores that run that gives him the lead. And, you know, getting emotional and pumped in the fist when he scored that run. Put it in the books. They wipe away the Nats, sweeping them for a second straight series. ugly sounds that's because there's some orange clad Mets fans that have filled up a whole lot of seats and left 
Mets fans are among the most passionate fans you'll see in any sports team anywhere. And I do think it's because, yeah, they're not always good, but when they're good, it's so special. The Mets belong to Mets fans. And that's, I think, what the Seven Line Army represents. I mean, is, is there like a Mets club in Atlanta? I don't know. I've never seen this before. Some of our fans on Twitter have told me the deal is with those obnoxious orange clad people and left. That is the Seven Line. It's a Mets fan club. They travel to select games. I mean, I've seen them in Chicago, Miami. You look up in Denver. The group is known as the Seven Line Army because the Seven Line is a subway that takes you out to uh, City Field out there in New York City. Like, what, what is the sense of being a fan? You go to root, you go to cheer, you go to stand up, you go to enjoy your life. And I would always go visit the Seven Line because I wanted to feel that mess. <laughs> For our group to be something that almost becomes part of the players' answers when they're talking about the fans. Exciting fans, energetic, seven line that gets a chance to be out there at our games. You know, the seven line was here tonight. They're unbelievable when they come, when they show up, and uh, you, you gotta like it. I mean, if you're a player, my gosh almighty. Here we are at the 155th game of the season, and the Mets are poised for a National League East flag for their sixth division title in their 54-year history. He struck him out! Tears of joy for the 2015 New York Mets, National League Eastern Division champions! <laughs> hey, that's a hell of a one! Yeah! Gary, I'm a bit emotional about this. Yeah, there's a lot of pent-up energy. of mine that actually works for the USA Today texted me a photo that his friend shot of Murphy holding our flag. I, I couldn't believe it. I almost dropped the phone in the bar. I was like, wow, like this is real. Like I held it up to my friends. I'm like, yo, check this out. Like, look at Murphy. Street, right near Penn Station. Place is packed out with Mets fans. Everyone's excited. First playoff game in nine years. So obviously people are a little. They were the kids that turned up, I guess. So. Yes. Let's go Mets! Let's go Mets! Let's go Mets! This is a, a big, big deal if you're a Mets fan. It's like Haley's Comet. Right. It really doesn't happen right. often. In 2006, when Beltron struck out against Adam Wainwright, as depressed as we all were, we thought we'll be back. They never got back. We had a caller earlier who said, and he's not wrong, you know, Mets and Dodgers, talent-wise, they're not that far off. All the Mets have to do, like they did in 99 and 2000, steal a game. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then you come back to City Field, the place is going nuts. Two-two pitch, fastball swung on it, missed strike three. The Grom climbing the ladder there, punched him out at 98. Something crazy is going to happen that's going to get, allow this team a chance to win that ball game. That ball's well hit to right. I mean, really well hit to right. And the Mets are on the board. Six and two thirds for Clayton Kershaw. The runners on base, and they're loaded. Right with a chance now to make it a little bit more than one to nothing Mets in the top of the seventh inning. He's gonna do it. The captain will do it right here. Big run, big run right here. Bottom of the ninth. Swing and a chopper, right side. Familia off the mound, has it. Sprints to the bag, put it in the box. So these last nine years have been tough. I mean, we've gone through some good, some bad, some ugly, and to be able to, to 
taste this again. Uh, I made those nine years, uh, you know, worth it. And it, it tastes sweet. This was, this was a great time, a lot of fun. The first postseason game that they won, I, just, I got all misty. I was like, God, the Mets actually won a postseason game. I can't believe it. One-two pitch, swing and a shot towards second. Murphy's got it, underhand flip, Tejada dumped hard. The out at second base, but the run scores. It is two to two and Tejada's hurt. It's postseason baseball. I had no doubt someone was gonna go in hard. It was in slow-mo that you saw, well, how hard. How do you define a dirty slide? I think pleats high, hitting the guy before you hit the ground. He didn't start that slide until he was just about on top of Tejada at second base. It's bare enough doing it, but then act as if like, uh, you know, hey, it's part of the game, man. You're going hard to try, try to break a double play. Whoops. There you go. X-rays have shown a fractured right fibula. What'd you think about this one? Only Chase knows what the intent was. He wasn't anywhere close to the heck. My experience is that's not a slide, that's a tackle. I have a problem with the play on a number of different levels. Broke my shortstop's leg, that's all I know. Do you anticipate retaliation from them? I, I don't know. It was amazing to see City Field come alive, and I was at a lot of games this year where people were crazy, but that was the crescendo. Not only was there so much enthusiasm after that Utley slide, but there was a serious, it was Roman in there. It was like the Coliseum. People were calling for that dude's head and they weren't kidding. <laughs> It was a good rallying cry for us, but we did a nice job collectively coming together and kind of keeping our emotions in check, keeping our you know, frustration, our anger in check. The best way to get back at somebody or back at a team is to go out there and knock them out of the playoffs. Come on, Brandon! Center. Back goes Hernandez, it's over his head, and off the wall! In comes Darno. in comes Flores, here comes Lagares, he scores standing, a double, and three runs batted in for Curtis Granderson, and the Mets have come right back to take a 4-3 lead! The that ball is absolutely scorched to left! I asked for Cespedes to put the nail in the coffin, and that nail pounced into the left field seats. Cespedes. You can't stop him here. We're home. Zartan. One and two the count. Here's the pitch. Swing and a broken back chopper back to the mound. Familia's got it. Trots to first. Underhands to Duda. Put it in the books. The best way to get revenge for what happened to Ruben Dejada is to beat down L.A. And we beat Familia, one strike away. You could hear the nervous murmur from the crowd and hear the heartbeats of Mets fans 3,000 miles away. Swung out and missed strike three. Put it in the box. The New York Mets are going to the National League Championship Series.
our highs are a lot sweeter because they're just so much more rare. I mean, it's not very often that we get to release enthusiasm and joy over this team. And so when it comes out, I didn't even know it was in there. I didn't know I could be that happy. It sort of takes your breath away, especially given how long the suffering had been. You can exhale, you go into the NLCS. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is fun. This is fun. I want to go far tonight. Daniel Murphy's enjoying the ride of his life right now. Postseason comes along and he becomes Babe Ruth. Don't know how, don't know what was going on, but all of a sudden he had seven home runs in the span of, what, nine games? The one-two pitch, breaking ball, lifted in the air, deep to right, down the line, got a chance, might go! This guy had 14 home runs all season in 2015. That was a career high. 2-1 delivery. Swinging a high fly ball, right center field. That ball going to the track. Are you kidding? Daniel Murphy, one more time, buries it into the bleachers in right center field. You get guys that go on those types of tears, you know, but very rarely do you see it against Kershaw, Granke, Arietta, Lester. It is an emotional roller coaster being a New York Med fan for sure. In every aspect of that word, yeah? In how they've won. But m more to the point, really, the heartbreaking end of 06. Ever since then, I think Mets fans have been extremely nervous. The Mets and Terry Collins have become completely accepting of this garbage. I mean, going into the year, yeah, there was a lot of hope, but many, many, many question marks. Hope and doubt. Sort of a slow, steady, tedious march back into depression. That was painful. Brutal. You know, I was disappointed. It's like we're prisoners in right. jail. Into the unbelievably dramatic events of the trade deadline. It is an emotional roller coaster being a New York Med fan, for sure. In every aspect of that word, yeah? In how they've won. But m more to the point, really, the heartbreaking end of 06. Ever since then, I think Mets fans have been extremely nervous. The Mets and Terry Collins have become completely accepting of this garbage. I mean, going into the year, yeah, there was a lot of hope, but many, many, many question marks. Hope and doubt. Sort of a slow, steady, tedious march back into depression. That was painful. Brutal. You know, I was disappointed. It's like we're prisoners in right. jail. Into the unbelievably dramatic events of the trade deadline. What just happened? This is a horrible trade. We're crying with them. That's how we feel in the stands. But. In the blink of an eye, that could change. It's out of here! It all starts to slowly come together. Gave me motivation. And then real joy. Oh my God. You understand the emotion. That was raw. It's tough to put into words. I don't know, I don't know, who, I don't, what, what what's going on? Put up the box! This team is magical. That's how it had to be. But I'm conflicted. Forget about joy or sadness, but it's just, oh, stress, just tension. He needed to win that freaking game. His games get like insane and it almost didn't feel real. I couldn't handle it. Are you kidding me? Ah! What is going on? No one likes a slow death. Let it, let it at least be quick. We blew it. It should not be infiltrating my life and emotions the way it is. It got delivered back into our natural state. It's still unbelievable. There's just... Let's go! Let's go! We're going to the series! Let's go!
the characters that you have embodied, which one of them are Mets fans? I believe Mo is a big Mets fan because he's from, he sounds like he's from Queens. You can't get more. You either laugh or cry at Mo's exploits. Mo either laughs or Mo wants to kill himself pretty much consistently, which is right in line with Met fans. You've been watching the Royals like we have. Be ready, he's swinging. Comedy, almost by definition, is stuff that you're either going to laugh or cry at. And the first pitch swinging, as he always does. And it's, you know, healing to choose to laugh. It's a lot easier to laugh because, man, you know, you'll, you'll be crying a lot. Cespedes was like that gorgeous woman that you brought home and you couldn't believe you were tapping into that. And, and people said, why has she never been married? And then the World Series got They're like, there is a ball after Cespedes. <laughs> Cetus Escobar to start the World Series. So that's why she never married anyone. It is important to laugh. Usually I'm able to do that better in retrospect. In the moment it's happening, I, uh, <laughs> I'm more into the, the sadness and the frustration. such a loyal fan base that frankly not a lot of teams have to that extent. And then things do go wrong. The, the pain is that, you know, the knife twists in there. You, you feel it a lot more. All right, I'm not even gonna wait till the game's over. They degrominated the degrominator. They just... Congrats, Arroyos. You guys are savages. You're savages. I don't know what to tell you. Broken back, fly ball, right field. They took our best and just, it was like this. You want to start your feet? This is what the Mets look like right now. Oh, I wish it wasn't funny. Yeah, this would be laughing. The middle of the lineup, David Wright, Joanna Cespedes, Lucas Duda, the big boppers. Didn't hit, all playoffs long. Daniel Murphy was the guy that hit, and really hit, and was the big run producer. But, you know, he turned back into a pumpkin on Halloween night. Three to two, New York, first and second, one out, top of the eighth. Murphy's Law, right? Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's a ground ball to Murphy. He's our hit. It is an emotional roller coaster being a New York Med fan for sure. In every aspect of that word, yeah? In how they've won. But m more to the point, really, the heartbreaking end of 06. Ever since then, I think Met fans have been extremely nervous. The Mets and Terry Collins have become completely accepting of this garbage. I mean, going into the year, yeah, there was a lot of hope, but many, many, many question marks. Hope and doubt. It is an emotional roller coaster being a New York Met fan for sure. In every aspect of that word, yeah? In how they've won. But m more to the point, really, the heartbreaking end of 06. Ever since then, I think Met fans have been extremely nervous. The Mets and Terry Collins have become completely accepting of this garbage. I mean, going into the year, yeah, there was a lot of hope, but many, many, many question marks. Hope and doubt. Sort of a slow, steady, tedious march back into 
it is an emotional roller coaster being a New York Met fan for sure. In every aspect of that word, yeah? In how they've won. But more to the point, really, the heartbreaking end of 06. Ever since then, I think Met fans have been extremely nervous. The Mets and Terry Collins have become completely accepting of this garbage. I mean, going into the year, yeah, there was a lot of hope, but many, many, many question marks. Hope and doubt. Sort of a slow, steady, tedious march back into depression. That was painful. Brutal. You know, I was disappointed. It's like we're prisoners in right. jail. Into the unbelievably dramatic events of the trade deadline. What just happened? This is a horrible trade. We're crying with them. That's how we feel in the stands. But. The blink of an eye, that could change. It's out of here! It all starts to slowly come together. Gave me motivation. And then real joy. Oh my God. You understand the emotion. That was raw. It's tough to put into words. I don't know, I don't know who, I don't. What, what what's going on? Put up the box! This team is magical. That's how it had to be. But I'm conflicted. Forget about joy or sadness, but it's just oh. stress, just tension. He needed to win that freaking game. His games get like insane and it almost didn't feel real. I couldn't handle it. Are you kidding me? Ah! What is going on? No one likes a slow death. Let it let it at least be quick. We blew it. It should not be infiltrating my life and emotions the way it is. It got delivered back into our natural state. It's still unbelievable. There's hope for this team going forward, which is ultimately how I now feel. It was a Hollywood script. That's my Matt set list right there. <laughs> Let me bring this stage one of the funniest men in America, the one, the only, Mr. An Steve. hour, right? Right hour? Most Met years, we're the Wiley Coyote. And we really think we're catching the Roadrunner. It's the false hope. And then when it's exposed, we're gonna make it to the playoff. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's the Wiley Coyote mentality.